1971, the rock group The Doors' lead singer Jim Morrison debuted their hit song about a murderous serial killer called Riders on the Storm. And recently, on October 7, 2023, we discovered that these Riders on the Storm do indeed actually exist in mass. We're witnessing it today. How so? Well, in Ezekiel chapter uh, 25, verses 15 and 17, which we're going to be looking at today, begins to give you some clues on these riders on the storm and who they are. So let's just jump in and see the prophetic word of God right now. Let's just go ahead and jump up, look up on your screen here. It says here, Thus says the Lord God, because the Philistines... That means land of immigrants. The Philistines, the immigrants, dealt vengefully and took possession with a spiteful heart to destroy because of the old ancient hatred. Ancient is the, is the Hebrew word olam, and it refers to a perpetual ongoing hatred that just builds up over year after year after year. This ancient his, hatred goes far, far back than, than anybody can imagine. You can go in and stick with the linear progression of Esau and Jacob, where a lot of people in commentaries will say this began. It goes back when Cain slew Abel. When brother killed brother, when human beings began murdering e each other, something happened a long time ago that caused this. And there is an entity behind it. And he's behind the riders of the storm to carry this out. And so here in uh, Ezekiel chapter 25 again here, it says, Thus says the Lord God, because the Philistines, the immigrants, dealt vengefully and took vengeance with a spiteful heart, what does that mean, folks? That means the Philistines are where Gaza is. That's the Gaza Strip. The word Philistine means the land of immigrants. Mm -hmm. They come in and uh, they just take over. And so we're seeing an onrush of immigrants who demanding that they take over your country as well as mine. We're seeing this onrush of the riders of the storm coming in with an agenda and we can't talk about it because because you know they're they're protected okay but here in gaza the uh, straw broke the camel's back in uh, october 7th when they rushed over and murdered in cold blood and filmed it with uh as allegedly with uh, news reporters um uh, filming it and being kissed by Hamas leaders and so forth for doing so. And so we have the evidence that this happened. And now we're, now we have people in the street protesting in support of the riders on the storm. I'm just read it again. Thus says the Lord God, it means the Lord Yahweh, Yehovah, because the Philistines, the immigrants, dealt vengefully and took vengeance with a spiteful heart to destroy because of the old hatred. The old, ancient, perpetual, ongoing hatred of human beings killing human beings with malicious, violent acts against a mortal enemy. That's what that means. Therefore, says the Lord God, I'll stretch out my hand against the immigrants. I'll cut off the Cretanites. That word Cretanite means executioners and destroy the remnant of the sea coast. I'll execute great vengeance upon them with furious rebukes, and they shall know that I am the Lord when I lay my vengeance upon them. Now the New King James. Again, I'll stretch my hand against the immigrants. I'll cut off the Cretanites, the executioners, and destroy the remnant of the sea coast. Folks, the remnant of the seacoast exists today in Gaza Strip, right where it says it is. And there are executioners there who went out and murdered people on October 7th. And now Israel is attacking and surrounding Gaza, and their forces are about a one kilometer from closing off the seacoast. How did Ezekiel foretell this and use, and why did God have them use these names like executioner? Maybe they're trying to talk about the writers of the storm that nobody wants to pay attention to. <laughs> you know, that's just how it swings sometimes. People just don't want to talk about it. 
It's, it's, it's just like it says in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, 15. That which has been is now, and that which is to be hath already been, and God requireth that which is past. If you understand this enigma, this riddle of the wise here, this, this saying in, in chapter 3, verse 15, uh, what hath been is now, and that which is to be hath already been, you understand that this is referring to prophetic patterns. This is what people don't understand. Events in the past foretell and portend events in the future, not in the same level or degree, but as we see in Bible prophecy, they get worse. You know, the man of sin comes, there's a war against the saints, there's all kinds of things the book of Revelation talks about, about the tribulation, it leads up to that. It just gets worse because God requires an account of, of that which is past. Well, what is past? Well, what was unreleased in the ancient past, Cain slew Abel, was the writers on the storm. Now, what in the world am I talking about? You know, people go, "What are you? T- why, why are you using a a um, a song by Jim Morrison, <clears throat> 1971, Riders on the Storm?" Well, um, there's a reason because Jim Morrison, and it's unequivocally, there's no deniable, and there's so much evidence that Jim Morrison he was into this dark art stuff. He died of an overdose. So, for, you know, so go figure. That's where the stuff leads you. He was very dark, and it, he, 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 he was a practitioner of the occult. And I think the occult world knows stuff, and the names in the Bible, which I'm going to get to, I'm going to show there's a mount, a mountain in the Jordan-Israel border there, uh, and that name in its etymology, in its meaning, means riders on the storm talking about murderous people executing vengeance because of an ancient hatred. And it manifests itself in many ways. So that caught my eye. And I'm going, wow, I know that song. You know, when I was running around in the world in my pagan days, that's I used to listen to the doors. Ugh, I can't stand them now. <laughs> I'm just telling you, that's just what I did way back in the day. The phrase we saw in the text, the ancient perpetual hatred, is mentioned two times in the Old Testament. Let me put this up here again. Thus says the Lord God, that means the Lord Yahweh, Jehovah, because the Philistines, the immigrants, dealt vengefully and took vengeance with a spiteful heart to destroy because of the old hatred. The old, ancient, perpetual, ongoing hatred of human beings killing human beings with malicious, violent acts against a mortal enemy. This ancient hatred is actually mentioned two times in the Old Testament. The first is seen in Ezekiel chapter 25, 15. The other is seen in Ezekiel chapter 35, verse 5. This perpetual ancient hatred is manifesting in the same geographic areas among the ancestors of the same people mentioned in these two chapters. But note this, in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12, the Apostle Paul informs us that there is a spiritual war raging and trapping human agents to carry out the will of these evil principalities, the rulers over at geographic locations, powers, rulers of darkness, and host of wickedness in heavenly places, who have their ancient hatred manifest in the hearts and mind of humanity itself, in us, in humanity. We are actually dealing with the purveyors of this ancient hatred called principalities. That Ezekiel chapter 25 and Ezekiel chapter 35 mention, who manipulates the two groups of people mentioned in these two chapters to manifest and bring forth this hate. And by applying the meaning of the names in the text reveals the spiritual uh, authors and their tactics in perpetuating this ancient hate to keep it alive, keep it going in the hearts and minds and pe- of people. I bet you didn't realize the depth of what Paul was saying. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. I did not realize, I, I, myself, I didn't realize the extent of it until recently, and after witnessing these things, the extent of their tactics. That we, what's behind these people are these principalities, and they want to carry out an ancient hate. That's what I'm talking about. Malicious uh, murderous hate. Just like Ecclesiastes 3.15 implies, 
What happened in the past mirrors the prophetic patterns to be fulfilled in the future. Why? Because God requireth that which is past. Ezekiel chapter 25, verse 15 and 17. Thus says the Lord God, because the Philistines, immigrants in Gaza, dealt vengefully and took vengeance with spiteful heart to destroy because of the ancient perpetual ongoing hatred a malicious violent acts against a mortal enemy. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, I'll stretch out my hand against the Philistines, the immigrants of Gaza. I'll cut off the Cretanite, their executioners, and destroy the remnant of the sea coast. I'll execute great vengeance upon them with the furious rebukes, and they shall know that I am the Lord when I lay my vengeance upon them. Do you get it? This sounds like the events that we're witnessing right now, just like I just said. And uh, we're seeing it. And then you go to Ezekiel chapter 25, uh, verse 8. Thus says the Lord God, or Yahweh, or Jehovah, because Moab, those of his father, and Seir say, look. Well, who is Seir? What is Seir? Why is that even mentioned? How could a mountain, if it refers to an area, how could a, a mountain, an area, an inanimate object say sea? Is it really talking about an inanimate object, a mountain, a piece of land, saying sea, or, or is this something else? It may be a principality, but maybe, maybe, you know, it just might, could be a principality. That name Seer is the key to understand where this hatred came from long ago. Seer is also mentioned in Ezekiel chapter 35, 1 through 5. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, set your face against Mount Seir. Stop. What in the world does that mean? What does it mean when, it, when he said, Son of man, set your face against Mount Seir? Well, first, let's go a little background here. A mountain, a mountain top or a high place, a mount in ancient times denotes where kings issue forth their orders to their ruling council to carry out the plan of their king. A mount refers to a place such as where councils meet. There is a such thing called a heavenly council. It is seen in, in the scriptures there in, in the book of Kings uh, about Ahab's demise, where God went before in his council and said, shoot me, a, shoot me a plan. I want to get rid of Ahab. What's the best way to do it? And he included his angels in there. And an angel came up and said, I'll be a lying spirit. And you not only get rid of Ahab, but you get, again, you get rid of all the other, other prophets of Baal as well. And God liked that idea. And that's what happened. So you have evidence of a heavenly council. There's also a dark council, as well as human councils. Kings have their courts, and they meet, and they plot, and they plan, you know. You have emperors long ago who met in their council chambers, and how to take over the world, so forth, etc., and how to do, do these things, how to, how to feed the population, all these different things going on in a king's council, or ruling council. You have it in the halls of parliament. If you have a parliamentary system of government, or in our own country, you have a republic, which I don't know if we even exist anymore, but they're supposed to be representing, but they don't. They don't represent the people. They represent special interests. That's what we're finding out. Got to remember, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12, lays out there's a hierarchy of, of a devil, and he has a dark counsel to carry out their ancient hatred toward God himself, his order, his design, his rule, his throne, and against his people to wipe them out. That is the ancient hatred. It goes way back, even before humanity was on the scene. And it says in Revelation, there was a war in heaven. And we don't know when the war happened. Some people say it happened between the, the first and fourth day of creation. You can take your pick, because I don't know. It could have happened earlier, before, sometime before humanity was on, on board. We do know that the angels witnessed uh, God's creation being made, but sometime after that, uh, there was a war in heaven. We don't know exactly when. And then the devil was cast to earth and all his minions, okay? Then humanity came on the scene, and the devil hates humanity. He always tries to divide humanity. His religion is all about division. And people go back... I, into ancient Hermeticism, Gnosticism, where it has a dualism. And Plato 
uh, you know, the guy who wrote Plato's Republic codified the idea of dualism, that uh, there's dual nature. There's the material, fleshly world and the good spiritual world. And it's the same as Gnosticism. It's the same thing. So the devil's all about dividing humanity, trying to divide humanity and slay humanity, and maybe have God do it for him. There's a war going on, and that's what it's about here. So let's keep going here. So now let's apply the meaning of Mount Seir in Ezekiel chapter 35, verses 1 through 4. Okay, let's just go ahead and do that. And I'm going to bring this slide up here with the verses on it. So I'm going to apply the meaning of Mount Seir in Ezekiel chapter 35, verses 1 through 4. We did see in the beginning, we saw this in Ezekiel chapter 25, talking about Philistia with this ancient hatred. This place has the ancient hatred. And it says, Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, set your face against Mount Seir. Mount Seir means a smelly, hairy, smelly, violent he-goat, or satar, who makes horrors riders on the storm. That is the etymology of the word, seer. I put a couple of uh, links down there where you go to a website and it gives you the Hebrew etymology of it. And you can find the meanings there. You go to your commentaries and find that it means a hairy one. It means after Esau. But it means be hairy and smelly like a he-goat. Half man and half goat. That's what it means. You go and you do a little more digging through some more commentaries. And then you come to the etymology of the word. Hell, who are This hairy, smelly, goat-like creature is in charge of the riders on the storm. Baal is a storm god. In the ancient pagan mythologies, you have tons of storm gods. Riders on the storm to create chaos and cause human beings to kill each other. Think about it. There's more in the word of God than this first meets the eye. Apply the name meanings. It reveals something deep. And that's where I got this. I mean, I didn't just pull this out of the hair and out of the air to make it fit. In fact, I, I was shocked, equally shocked to know that the um, Hamas people in, in Iran said the October 7th uh, operation was called Operation Storm, Stormy Deluge or Storm. So you have riders on the storm. I mean, it, this is beyond, beyond um, coincidental. It just, it just it has to be. Now let's look at this again. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me saying, Son of man, set your face against Mount Seir, the council of Mount Seir, the smelly, hairy, smelly, violent he-goat who makes horrors, riders on the storm. Verses 3 and 4, and say to it, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, O Mount Council of Seir, I'm against you. I'll stretch my hand against you and make you desolate. I shall lay your cities waste, and you shall be desolate. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. Verse 5, Because you have an ancient hatred, a perpetual, ongoing, ancient, murderous hatred, and have shed the blood of the children of Israel by the power of the sword at, at a time of their calamity, when their iniquity came to an end. That is really deep. Just let the Holy Spirit teach you something from that right now. Scholars here will correctly point out that this refers to the feud between Esau and Jacob. That's correct, remember, but there's prophetic patterns here. This goes back before Esau. It goes back to Cain slaying Abel. It goes back to the rebellion in heaven. And how Esau, you know, wanted to get rid of and kill Jacob. And they eventually made up, okay? Uh, but people... And scholars, a lot of times, just stop there and move on. However, let's not forget that Jesus described the devil as a murderer, a liar from the beginning. The beginning of what? This ancient hatred. Jesus describes the devil in John chapter 10 as the thief who comes to do what? To kill, rob, and destroy. Why? He has an ancient hatred and passes this on to humanity to mirror. Okay, he teaches humanity, principalities, powers, what? We don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against what, manipulating people? Okay, let's go back to Ezekiel 25, verse 8. It says, Thus says the Lord Yahweh, or God, here, because Moab, the house of his father, and Seir, the smelly, hairy, violent he-goat, who make whores, riders on the storm, say, Look, 
It says, Thus says the Lord God, because the Philistines, immigrants of Gaza, dealt vengefully and took vengeance with a spiteful heart to destroy because of the old, ancient, perpetual, ongoing, malicious, violent acts against the mortal enemy. Therefore, thus says the Lord, I will stretch out my hand against the the immigrants of Gaza, and I'll cut off the executioners and destroy the remnant of the sea coast. And when you turn on the headlines today, you're, you're witnessing this. In, in all appearances, in my personal opinion, this is my opinion now, that this is this 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 is this is happening. Just like it says in Psalms 83 war, where it starts in, in, in Isaiah chapter 11 there, and, and Zephaniah, and this is this is ongoing, and leaders of these this group is being uh, captured or killed and the world is trying is suddenly just like it says in those those verses in those chapters i went over already we'll, we'll say with the sons of lot which means those who will uh, hide in the background and will cover this over so you see the people coming and covering this over and saying that israel now is the enemy not the real perpetual enemy. You're seeing this flip going on right now. The Jewish people are getting very afraid to live in your own country right now. If you're in the West, even the United States are getting fearful because, wow, uh, the, the Holocaust, this is how the Holocaust began. Just look at the news and just type in protest in New York City uh, yesterday, November 10th, and elsewhere around the world, and you will see this perpetual ongoing hatred in living color breaking forth mm -hmm. and the text goes on to mention judgment on moab of his father on ammon those warriors of renown of the mountain on edom the bloody red ones you'll see that and elsewhere you'll see this, this vengeance is going to be taken on elam the area of western persia the east of old babylon the etymology of the word elam comes from these meanings means the hidden ones those who hide behind somebody to, and get them to do their dirty work that's how ancient persia did it that's why the, it was a persian and mede empire persian and the medes the persians used the medes to to just to do whatever they want okay that's the idea and so they hide behind and so modernize this they're hiding behind the riders of the storm. This principality called in the Council of Mount Seir, the, which is the riders of the storm. You have the Iranian Hamas Hezbollah October 7th murderer operational plan that translates into storm or, or storming deluge. And yes, riders on the storm, just the etymology of the name Seir suggests, will hide behind another to carry out these ancient hatred of the devil himself against those who are called of God, God himself, as well as the entire human race. As it says in the scriptures, that which has been is now, and that which is to be hath already been, and God requireth that which is past. God requireth that which is past. This ancient hatred is going to be dealt with, and that's what these scriptures are talking about. And Ezekiel chapter 25 and 35 concerns the judgment on people who are controlled by this ancient hatred, seen in this raw genocidal form against God's prophetic people of Israel, who have been regathered a second time back into the land in 1948, which is prophesied and actually fulfilled, just like it says. This is the only book where... You have written prophecies that are, are absolutely have come to pass, and and being an atheist at one time, and, a, and I didn't like this, or an agnostic, I'd argue against people about the Christianity and all this stuff. I say, oh, the Bible prophecy opening up to your private interpretations, but there are specific scriptures about the uh, Israel coming back in the land a second time, regathered, and that was completely fulfilled. And they also about a nation being born again in one day. The first time it ever happened, it was 1948 in May. Now it's Israel. They were gathered a second time. And the iniquity of Israel was fulfilled, and they were regathered back. Because that's the purpose of the regathering. You go back to Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 28, you know, if Israel strayed and went into the ways of the world, they're going to be scattered into the nations. And when they, and after a time their iniquity is, is dealt with, they'll be drawn back into the kingdom of God. The first time was with Nebuchadnezzar. They were 70 years of captivity. The second time was 
in 70 AD with the fall of Israel, finalized by 135 AD, the rest of the Jews were kicked out of Israel. And the time of iniquity was fulfilled for them in 1948 of, of what they did back in the ancient day. God said, it's not, not me. He says, you know, they're a covenant people and you may not like what I'm saying, but it's, you know, it says in, in um, Exodus there in the Ten Commandments, if they stray from, you know, having any other gods, they're going to be held for uh, the third, second, fourth generations. They're going to have, you know, they're, they're just going to be held to pay. And God wasn't trying to be mean and, and say he was doing it. He says, you open the door for the devil to come and destroy you because the devil has ancient hate, hatred and he's trying to get God himself to destroy his own people. But God says, I'm merciful. I'm not going to do that. But you did do this deed. Therefore, you open the door for the riders of the storm to come after you. Your iniquity has been purged. Now you're coming back into your land. So let's look at uh, slide nine here. It says here, I'm going to add the definitions of Mount Seir in here. It says, moreover, the word of the Lord came to me saying, son of man, set your face against the counsel of a smelly, hairy, violent he goat who makes horror riders on the storm and prophesy against it. Uh, so against what? You're prophesying against the dark counsel, the riders of, on the storm. Verse five. Because you have an ancient hatred and have shed the blood of the children of Israel by the power of the sword at the time of their calamity when their iniquity came to an end. This is what I'm trying to say. This ended during the second regathering of Israel that happened in 1948 when they became a nation. That has been purged. So these, these verses here, and if I don't lose my signal again, I'll bring it up again here, is this. Because you have an ancient hatred and have shed the blood of the children of Israel by the power of the sword at the time of their calamity when their iniquity came to an end. So the iniquity of Israel has been fulfilled. Look what it says about its enemies in Ezekiel 35 verses 1 through 4. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me saying, Son of man, set your face against Mount Seir, that smelly, hairy, violent he-goat who makes horrors and, and riders on the storm. Say to it, say, say to not to a person, to the council. Thus says the Lord, behold, Mount Council of Seir, I'm against you. I'll stretch out my hand against you and make you desolate. I shall lay your cities to waste and you shall be desolate. You shall know that I am the Lord. Okay, that is what is going on. In that day and time when Ezekiel wrote this, this part about their iniquity being purged has not happened. But now it has. So this happens, in my opinion here, from what I gather, which I probably go against uh, some established scholarship here on the matter, uh, just because I translate the name, did an etymology study on this, something that I learned from Chuck Missler to do. Um, it fits. It fits what we're seeing today. It fits where we're heading and what's going to happen as, as well. And this is an incredible thing. And so it is quite, quite remarkable. The ancient hatred from the devil and his minions is cunning and is crafty. It's crafty in how his messengers appear as angels of light and goodwill in one hand and messengers of blatant irrational hatred in the other. And so we're, we're seeing that in the news media. We're seeing a rise against Israel, hatred toward Israel. God's chosen people again rise up its ugly head. But they come across as angels of light. It's an irrational, blatant hatred of another people group. It's called, and they were calling for, genocide. You need to realize that not just genocide of them, it's genocide of Christians. It's genocide of all that's decent and good. It's genocide of libertarians, genocide of classical liberals. It's genocide against free-minded people who want to live and let live. It is genocide against the Christians. We see this genocide coming and playing out when the uh, Antichrist makes wars against the saints of God in the uh, book of Revelation. We see this keep raising its ugly head against the council of Mount Seir, this hairy, smelly he-goat, half man, half goat, who's just angry and violent, and his council who are putting it together. The devil actually plays both sides of the same 
coin. He always plays this dualism. In theosophy, the fallen entities or the fallen watchers channel the same dualism. They call it the White Lodge of mercy and compassion with the, I'm going to bring this slide up so you can actually see it a little bit better here. And they, uh, they have this dualism. They play the, the white lodge of mercy, of mercy and compassion with the dark lodge of severity and judgment and harshness and hate. So these two forces create the chaos needed for the devil's order on earth to be complete and form a synthesis. And if you look on the screen there, I wrote this before. It's the same uh, concept that Hegel wrote about in his dialectic of thesis, antithesis to reach synthesis because balance, you achieve balance by bl blending severity of justice fused together with mercy and compassion by illumination to create the process of constant compromise to make a brave new world. So you have the kinder, merciful ideas of communism and fascism and totalitarianism and uh, totalitarian uh, democracy against the bad parts of communism and fascism and democracy, so forth, etc. You put the two to get total, absolute, top-down, bottom control of every aspect of your life is where this is heading. And they want to create all the chaos they need to get there. This goes back to the, this is all part of the ancient hatred. It's seen in theosophy. It's seen all over the place. And we are beginning to witness this two-pillar idea break forth worldwide against the Hebrew people and soon Christians, as well as all, everyone who opposes their one world plan, devised by the devil's hatred toward God, his order, his design, his way, his people. How this ancient hate is unleashed is revealed in what the occultic 3-4 pattern I mentioned last week regarding in Amos chapter 1 and 2, which I haven't even mentioned yet, uh, where God mentions the phrase, for three transgressions and for four, he would unleash judgment against all who are swept up in this ancient hatred, both human and the fallen watchers. So you go back into my prior video and, and, and see, see what, what God's judgment against this 3-4 pattern that the occult world, that theosophy codified, it's in there. And he, he's going after this ancient hatred. And last week in Trumpets of Danger sound video, I shared how this hate passed on to human agents acting as angels of light by using three stages of initiation on individuals first and by four stages of, of initiation unleashed on unsuspecting humanity by those who have been initiated. Theosophy simply codified the devil's plan from his dark council and passed it on to human agents uh, as, as um, agents of light. Okay, so let's review here. And I'm going to go back to uh, Alice Bailey's Initiation, Human, and Solar. I'm just going to bring it up on the screen for you to see. And I'm just going to go over it real quickly. On pages 305 of the PDF explains how to initiate an unwilling and unknowing humanity into this realm of hate without anybody getting the wiser. The first group consists of three steps used to condition the human heart called the rays or energies of aspect carried out through the activities of adaptability and assimilation. So you want to assimilate everybody. First, you go through the, the ray of will and power. It's, uh, and that is used to what? It is used to adapt the human mind to, to develop their will and ego through empowerment for power's sake. How do you do that? How do you develop, develop humanity to be uh, focused on power? Well, it's all about you. It's all about you, baby. It's, it, 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 it's, it's the me gospel. Me first, me, myself, and I are the most important in the measurement of all truth. It's this attitude. Not long ago, we saw this in the United States school system when uh, kids sport teams, children's sports teams, both earned the same trophy so as not to hurt the feeling of the losers. Okay? That's the first lesson. You're a victim. They won because then they're not better. You're equal to them. So you now have power. You can oppress those who won. With those who have more money than you, you can oppress. You can, you know, just be lazy, and they're supposed to support you because you are a victim. So you got power, baby. This is, has moved today, and we see it in these safe spaces now. I need my safe space from you oppressors. I deserve what you worked hard for because you oppress me and keep me from getting what you have. 
and I'm poor and impoverished or I can't get what I need, so I need a safe space from you oppressing and offending me. So now I exercise power over you because I'm the victim. You must bend to my truth for equity and inclusiveness sake or else I'll silence you, cancel you. In a sick kind of way, uh, this is how people are initiated and graduated into the second stage of uh, initiation defined as Alice Bailey is what? The ray of energies and love and wisdom. Love. Love, 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 love. Where people become lovers of self. That's what happens. They become proud, headstrong lovers of pleasure. I can take because I'm a powerful victim. So what? What happened here? So what's going on? Since you are a powerful victim, I can take from you. I have the right to censor and silence truth because it misinforms others of our noble, loving intentions. Because we want to take over the world because we love you. Uh, uh, and everybody is inclusive. Everybody's equity. Everybody, you know, we got to cut the knees off of those, uh, legs off of those who, who succeed in life and give it uh, where everybody can't, is, is, is the same height. And, uh, you know, that, 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 that's fair. It's loving. It's kind. We are on the side of good. We're the angels of light. We're the uh, riders on the storm. We can silence your truth that misinforms because we have loving intentions of a beautiful world of utopia, of 15-minute cities where all think alike. There's no more hate unless it's ours based on love to make you submit to, to for the good of humanity. So we have to silence you, censor you. We have government and culture on our side. What are the results? Hatred blossoms in the streets. Criminals and sexual creeps have all the rights. The innocent have none because uh, they don't agree with us. This helps those in leadership take political control over us. Take dominion through abusing power. After all, why? To achieve the greater good. This, this is a true statement. It's by author Ver, Versilusis in the New Inquisitions. The key to this transformation of the totalitarian into the role of a persecutor is a set of doctrines that one holds to be absolute or universal truth. Thus, everyone else is made into an unbeliever or a traitor. It is only a short step from this to believe that one's duty is to impose the doctrines on everybody else and that such imposition is for their own good, for the good of society. A common perception of totalitarianism is that the, their target group have become a vermin or a virus. Magna. Do you hear what Joe Biden, I mean, o, o Biden, Obama, O Biden, um, presidency said magna is evil we must stop them at all cost 100 million people you're now vermin you have no rights you're the oppressor we got to get rid of you because what you love your country you, you you want prosperity for all you you want you want liberty and freedom you want lower prices you want cheaper gas you you want a world that that you, you you respect each other and get along. Now you're the enemy because you don't agree with the totalitarian system. The writer's on the storm. The third ray is adaptability, which means assimilation. And so the idea is to use, get human agents to assimilate into the next four rays. It involves altering the character of the human race to create harmony through conflict, guided by the solar hierarchy playing both sides. This is where the term order out of the chaos comes from. You create, you make this, uh, this uh, harmony through conflict sound beautiful. You use the arts and entertainment and, and make it uh, a beautiful thing. You, you really hoodwink people on this. And how do you get there? You use concrete knowledge or science. Have you heard about science lately? And you can't disagree with science, the science of, of saving the planet. It's just unequivocal. If you disagree with it, you will be silenced and censored. If you disagree with the silent medical science that, that the HWO wants to impose, you are silenced. You are censored. You can't have any deviation. Science now. Science. And what, what I'm trying to say is these things are what the 
uh, what the leaders and they what they do is they take over the mountains of cultural mountains of influence and then they enforce these initiation to make you a child of hell to get you to comply or else you know you, you can't buy sell or eat this is wicked this is this is riders on the storm so these new abstract idealism and devotion, angels of light, we're doing this for the noble reason and cause to save the planet, save humanity. Everybody's about love, love, love. It goes back to the first three stages. If you don't assimilate, 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 we cut you off. We censor you. We all look alike, smell alike, dress alike, and and you people have you got to give it to the people pouring over to your border. Don't ask questions. How dare you? We're doing this for your good. We're the good guys. <laughs> We're riders on the storm. <laughs> we, we got your best interest in heart. <laughs> that, that's basically, I think you get the picture. And the seventh ray is ceremonial magic. Basically what this does, it makes a narcissistic world. <laughs> and so you, uh, that's what it happens. It's a collective narcissist sets in, thus uh, through the ceremonial magic, this uh, collective narcissism sets in. So one is viewed as powerful and justify that they're love, they love wisdom, they want to liberate humanity. It's all about liberating through the oppressors. It's getting rid of the Hebrew people, Christians, conservative, libertarians, um, pro, um, classical liberalism. They, they get rid of that. They want to liberate the world from the clutches of the nuclear family and transition them into the brotherhood of a, a global world citizen. You must conform or else achieve by threats and active violence against any and everybody who they view as an oppressor, as the vermin. The riots of 2019 through 2010 are just an example. The ones starting now are just an example of this. We see this rising again in the protest legitimizing genocide of God's covenant, covenant people setting in. We're seeing this, folks. We're seeing the writers on the storm. Okay? We see it. Like I said, the common perception of totalitarians is that their target groups are vermin or a virus. Don't believe me? Look at this article from Salon Magazine. Far-right magna theocrats, the most dangerous threat to America. Those of vermin, those of vermin, those of vermin must be eradicated. Because we're loving and kind, and we're all about nobility and, and equity, and love is love. And we're the good guys, but you are the evil ones. But if you're really the good guys, then why you want to, why are you calling people names like that? Why? Well, they play in both sides of the ancient hate of the devil, so all assimilate into a new consciousness, a new culture, a brand new man achieved by deception that justifies the destruction of all that's decent and good. The ray energies of activity or adaptability through assimilation are the stages needed to transition into the next four stages. Okay? And like the um, Rod Dreher says, a totalitarian society is is one which an ideology seeks to displace all other prior traditions and institutions with the goal of bringing all aspects of our society under the control of that ideology. A totalitarian state is one that aspires to nothing less than defining and controlling reality, folks. That is what we are dealing with in this wicked, vile world, folks. And that goes into these four stages here. According to H.P. Bilvasky in Theosophy, the fourth ray of initiation is the greatest development of the physical body and speech and communication has been reached. And they uh, do this to bring on the cultural uh, uh, centers of communication, speech, psychology, so forth, etc. They take that over in order to create harmony through conflict by creating their order out of the chaos they make. This is achieved by initiating the world's servers of their, their agents who have been brainwashed to spread this vision of harmony and unity and paint a good picture of collectivism and authoritarianism as the good guys battling the, the, the oppressors. If you're not a, a Christian or of a Hebrew descent, but a free thinker, a libertarian, like I said, a conservative, even a classical liberal, you're viewed by them as vermin. 
Thus, you will experience this ancient hate of the devil towards humanity because God created us. You might not agree that God even exists. It doesn't matter. You are the oppressor, the enemy. You are the enemy to these people. And your head, like Christians in, in, in Hebrew people, are on the chopping block right now. Because these people, in their eyes, are doing this for humanity's own good to make a perfect world. And you're just in the way. You have to get rid of the reactionary forces. They went over the collective masses of humanity by taking over the communications, by making collectivism look beautiful and perverted lifestyles look beautiful and justified. And, and they put your own morals and ideas against each other. And they constantly change the meaning of words. These four stages involve taking over the cultural mountains of influence. Uh, just like I said earlier, this is what it's all about. They take over the cultural mountains of influence. This is why the fifth stage invokes the controls of the energies of thoughts about science. You conform to a narrative or else. And you uh, have to have the idea of abstract idealism and devotion uh, to the cause. If you disagree with the cause, you know what happens. You're canceled. It's all achieved, like I was trying to get into earlier, through the ceremonial magic or law. It is a time when enlightened leaders influence the greatest flood of human disciples under the governance of fallen watchers to carry out karmetic justice for all. And karmetic justice is described as a social revenge theory, your social justice, equity, inclusiveness, social credit scores, etc. Ceremonial magic is used to move humanity into the Gnostic idea of pure spirit, this dualism, like I mentioned. In other words, you're a deity in disguise. Reach, reach your goddess. Be your goddess. Be your own god. Let the goddess within you come out, ladies. Men, you know, let your goddess come out. I mean, just think about it. Let your mind roll on that one. So they use ceremonial magic. That's why you're seeing a lot of whacked out idea. Paganism coming back in vogue, and they're not calling it that. They use another name. Transition, little kids. Yeah, that's an old ancient practice that they did. Um, it's, it's a sick thing. You need to study it. So there's Gnostic ideas to mortify, destroy the flesh, destroy the material world so you reach a pure spirit state. And you, you think that these rays of initiation and stuff are not coming to uh, about. And um, so I'm going to go sh read these to you. Listen to what Alice Bailey said, Externalization of the Hierarchy, page 372, PDF. In every nation, a relatively small group of people decide all important issues and determine all major national activities, as they do either by force, terror, and deception, or by pers persuasion, fair words, and the application of ideological motives. Of this situation, the world, the lords of destiny, are veiling themselves. That's the ancient, that's the, the hierarchy, that's the uh, principalities, powers, and so forth, the Ephesians 6 crowd, are unveiling themselves in order to bring the ancient conflict to an end, and so enable humanity to pass into the new Aquarian age relatively free, with a clear understanding of right human aims, right relationships, and man's predestined future. In Alice Bailey, Externalization of Hierarchy, page 372, PDF continues, One of the first steps toward this is to prepare men's minds to accept the fact that the reappearance of their Christ, that the Antichrist, is imminent. You must tell men everywhere that the masters and their groups of disciples are actually working to bring order out of chaos. That there is a plan. I move over here to this slide. The road to totalitarian dominion leads through many intermediate stages. During this process, what common sense and normal people refuse to believe is that everything is possible. In other words, people can't believe this stuff that Alice Bailey right, said. Could, she's a whack job. It can't happen. But you're witnessing it right now in front of you. But, you, but fair-minded people go, no, 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 this is not happening. I want to go back shopping. I'm going to go, no, this stuff's not happening. Everything's going to go back to normal. We'll, we'll get through this. You know, we heard end of, the, end, end of time stuff before. You know, all this stuff is hooey balooey. This can't possibly be happening. They said the same thing in Nazi Germany before the Nazis as they were taking power. This can't happen here. It did. Can't happen in Spain in 1936 in the Spanish Civil War. It happened. Can't happen in, in Russia, but it happened when it became the Soviet Union. 
It can happen. It can't happen. It didn't. It's not going to happen in China. No, 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 no. It happened in Mao's revolution. No, no, it's not going to happen in, in, in Vietnam. No, 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 no. no. Everything's going to go on. That's like it says, you know. And guess who got power? So people just simply can't believe that this is happening, and yet it's happening. They can't possibly believe any of this stuff. So what can we expect? Well, first off, just know that God is going to deal with this just as Ezekiel chapter 25 verses 8 through 11 says. This is what to expect. God's going to, in this war, that he is going to judge these people. How? I'm going to close this with this. I don't want to go too much longer. But he says, because Moab, those of his father and seer, those of the smelly, hairy half man, half goat who make horrors, riders on the storm. Look, the house of Judah, those who praise God, is like all the other nations. They're prosperous. They're the oppressors. They're occupiers. Let's go get them. We have the news media and the other nations. We have everything. We're set. We're ready to tear them up. We're going to wipe them out. Therefore, behold, I clear the territory of Moab, it means of his father, of its cities. Cities are places a power where, where rulers rule from in the ancient times, where the satraps or governors would rule in light of their emperor or whatever. This would be the powers or, or host of wickedness in the heavenly places. Uh, you know, these are rulers of darkness. This is They would rule in cities and the principality would be this, one of the principalities would be the smelly half man, half goat. I think you know what I'm talking about, you know. Think of Baphomet, for example. Aleister Crowley came up with that. Good example of this. Think about it. Think who that represents. And uh, think of uh, that. That's just more than just one entity, actually. One ancient principality. It covers uh, Inlil. <laughs> it covers the Baal, or the Baal, uh, storm gods. The writer, they're co governing the writers of the storm, okay? To go against those who praise God. Think about it. What is, think of what it's saying with the meanings of the words added in. Look, the house of those who praise God is like all the nations. Therefore, behold, I'll clear the territory. This is what the Lord says. I will clear the territory of his father, of its cities, its, its power bases, on its frontier. I mean, the frontier is worldwide. And all these cities where they set up shop, where they govern now, you'll see massive protest. Okay? Just hang with me here. I'm giving you my opinion here. Uh, cities on its frontier, the glory, the renown, renown and shining of the country. What are they shining? What are they advocating? What's their glory about? In the videos that came out on October 7th, we saw some of it through live webcams that were taken from, uh, from the murdered people's own homes and security cameras. Okay, We saw it transpire. It's on film. It's well documented. That's their glory and renown. How do I know? Look at the next verse. Beth Jessamoth. The glory and their renown is that making a house of desolation. How? Through the Lord of the Enchanters. And this seventh level layer of initiation involves enchantments, ceremonial magic. Keep, keep tracking with me. Baal, Meon, the Lord of the Enchanters. Known in Mesopotamian Lord as an Inki, which is a head principality. Just, just, just saying. And Kith, and Kirth Jah, Jahaim, where two cities meet in a disputed land. And this is the West Bank area. Basically, that's, I'm just compiling where this area roughly is. It follows the mountains of Seir, which come from the Judean hills all the way up into Lebanon. And there's a roll of hills and there's a Mount Seir. They're kind of like, not quite in the middle, but between, I think it's in Jordan and uh, Israel border area there. And that's where it's located, the actual mountain highest point of this mountain chain. And so this is the disputed area. <laughs> Expect something be brewing in the, in, in, in the West Bank. They're dis Israel's distracted in the south of Gaza, in the north of Lebanon, and on pure military speaking, when you divide forces and their assets, you hit them where the weakness, right in the middle. There's a big middle there to, to 
of the West Bank. Just speaking in a pure military sense. To the men of the East refers to Arabia, Mesopotamia, the old Assyrian Empire, um, parts of Persia. I'll give it as a possession together with the Ammonites, the sons of renowned warriors tall as a mountain, that the Ammonites may not be remembered among the nations. Because their glory, their glory consists of making desolations and destruction. The use of enchantments, they shout, their God is greater than all other gods, through enchantments. Uh, in in modern world, they don't really do that, but they say that uh, if you belong to a certain political party or the political ideology, you're vermin. You are you 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 are the enemy. We'll silence you. We'll censor you. You don't you bow because we are greater than you. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. How so? You know, they want to create a house of desolation. They use enchanters. And they want to have two cities meet in disputed land. Again, the dualism, the uh, conflict, you know, put play both sides. In my opinion, this is what the scripture is saying here in a prophetic sense that most people probably don't see. You know, you may disagree with me. That's okay. I'm only giving you my opinion and I'll state that. And you can decide if I'm right or not. You know, you just, this is what I see from the scripture here. Um, the Ammonites may be re not remembered among the nations. I execute judgment upon of those of his father, the devil, and they shall know that I am the Lord. Now I want to end with this. The controlling mind of the totalitarian foresees a paradise in which every action, every object is monitored, labeled, and controlled. There, there will be no room for any bad thing to exist. Nothing and no one will be out of place. That's Charles esteem in fascism and the anti-festival. So, the goal of fascism and totalitarianism is to label their victims that they want to go after as fascists and totalitarians. They, they mirror their own crimes upon the innocent in order to justify their demise. And they do it because they want to create a paradise for them and not so much for the rest of us. I showed you that this paradise involves justification for the eradication of uh, climate problems, the eradication of poverty. How do you achieve it? By the eradication of population. Again, I end it with this. This is implemented in the program of action. It's in UN policy. Sustainability is consistent, like in verse uh, objective 328, consistent with Agenda 21, the objectives are to ensure that population, environmental, and poverty eradication factors are integrated into sustainable development policies, plans, and programs. How about sustainability? We want to make a brave new world. Equity, inclusiveness. When you hear those words, that's exactly what they're talking about. But folks, what you're seeing in right now happening in the Middle East is setting the stage for something to come. That is for certain. We do not know how things will shake out. Um, but I know that Israel is determined to wipe out Hamas. This is, fits the Bible prophecy and all the scriptures that I use so far, trying to explain what's happening, trying to correlate it with what you're seeing in your own country. This is what principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, and hosts of wickedness do in the heavenly places against us to get human minions to perpetuate an ancient hatred to kill and destroy all that is decent and good by calling them vermin to create this new utopic society just like Charles here said Charles S. time the controlling mind of the totalitarian foresees a paradise in which every action every object is monitored labeled and controlled there will be no room for any bad thing to exist nothing and no one will be out of place I'll end it on this note. Revelations chapter 13, the false prophet comes up and says, If you don't worship the beast and get this mark, you can't buy, sell, or eat. Every factor of your life will be controlled and monitored. In England, they were celebrating 15-minute cities and then protesting them when they found out that if you move out of your 15-minute city, you can have your funding, your bank account frozen. Because you moved out of your 15-minute ghetto, I mean city, a paradise they have for you. We're that close, folks. 
We have the AI systems being developed, probably already are set up, where we can go digital and uh, your cash will be digital. They can control what you buy, sell, or eat. And if you don't assimilate, remember the, the, the Alice Bailey road to assimilation that I talked about? You have seven rays. The first three rays uh, it makes you assimilate. Uh, the, the other four rays are enforcing for the ideas of, of creating harmony through chaos and beauty and art and unity and all that stuff. They'll use science and concrete knowledge. You know, you can't deviate from the narrative. They use abstract idealism and devotion. In other words, you get people protesting and burning down cities and you solidify everything through devotion, through the enchanters, through the arts and through the changing the laws change laws that's what involves that involves what look at it again array of serial magic are laws the antichrist comes and does what he change he changes signs seasons time seasons and laws so this is lawlessness you change the law in order to break the law and to pit people against each other to create conflict so you can create this utopia of total top down bottom up total control to destroy the material world so people can achieve a super spiritual state. You know, riders on the storm. Riders on the storm. They had Baal storm gods. Riders on the storm. I'd like to end on a more positive note. And this is the positive note. This is what God says about it. He is going to take care of this. He's going to deal with it. And he wants his people, his children, us Christians to get on our face and begin praying toward God and do some spiritual warfare against this stuff and try to delay it. And also, we have in the churches have a lot of repentance. With that, uh, I don't know what else to say other than you guys be blessed in Jesus' name. If you'd like to support what I do, is up here, is on the website. Uh, all right, on your screen right now, I have the website, email, other contact information, support information up there. My book's up there. And again, if anybody tries to mimic um, me by giving you a personal email begging for money, that is not me. I don't do that. So with that, you guys be blessed in Jesus' name.